8 News Now at 6. A secret Pentagon program to study unknown aerial objects, otherwise known as UFOs, may not be finished after all. The civilian contractor for the program was Bigelow Aerospace, which is based here in Las Vegas. Their contract, though, ended in 2012, but the man who managed the program inside the Pentagon, he thinks it's still operating. George Knapp of the I-Team is here with more on his exclusive story tonight. His name is Luis Elizondo, and most of us first heard his name last October when he stood on a stage with rock star Tom DeLonge and other government insiders. Elizondo spent 10 years as head of a secret study of unidentified aerial objects. He was also instrumental in the release of official UFO videos recorded by military pilots. We sat down with him earlier this week to ask, among other things, why the Pentagon considers UFOs to be a potential threat. Is it a threat? And if it's a threat, is it Russian? Is it Chinese? And yet, these are all normal questions you would ask, whether you're dealing with terrorism or weapons of mass destruction or any issue du jour, right? National security issue du jour. And yet, here we are with something that doesn't fit. Doesn't fit. Doesn't fit. Luis Elizondo you know, has spent most of his adult life protecting his country on active duty in combat hotspots, handling terrorists at Guantanamo, and at the Pentagon, where he was the point man for ATIP, the Advanced Aerial Threat Identification Program. The program collected and analyzed information about encounters between the U.S. military and spectacular but unknown technology, what some would call UFO. My job in the government at the time, really, with regarding ATIP, was to twofold: to to determine what it was and how it worked. Um, not really focusing on, as I said before, who's behind the steering wheel or their intent. I figured. If we can answer at least those two first things, everything else we'll be able to explain later. Elizondo says even his immediate supervisor in the Pentagon was unaware of the program. The word threat is built into the name ATIP, and even though the unidentified craft being reported didn't launch an Independence Day type attack on humanity or zap major cities with death rays, the Defense Department had to consider the possibilities. The so-called Tic Tac UFO, for instance, was detected over several days in 2004 by personnel with the USS Nimitz Battle Group off the coast of San Diego. It didn't attack, but it demonstrated vast superiority over America's most advanced defense systems. I think if you were to take this issue that we've seen, you have something coming into our airspace or the airspace we control that has maybe a, a Russian star on the tail or has North Korean tail numbers, I think people would have a much different reaction and response because there's something we can identify and say that is in our airspace and shouldn't be here. You DOD, you CIA, you DHS have the responsibility of protecting us. How did this happen? And yet, here we have that same scenario, but there are no flags and tail numbers on the tail. In fact, there may not even be a tail on some of these things. Um, and yet it's crickets. Nobody wants to have the conversation. In 2007, a small group of senators led by Nevada's Harry Reid initiated a program to change the culture surrounding UFO reports. Reid was motivated in part because of classified reports he'd read about UFO encounters over U.S. nuclear bases in which atomic weapons were somehow disabled. The communications in the missile defense installation was shut down. It didn't happen once, more than once. We have things in ships at sea, these things in the water, what is that? The program set up by the Pentagon to assist ATIP was housed at Bigelow Aerospace in Southern Nevada. The contract ended in 2012, but Elizondo believes some version of the study is still ongoing. He thinks it makes sense to study Tic Tacs and other UFOs and compares it to how you might react if someone pierced your home security system. The first thing you do as you come down your stairs, as you look in your living room, you see muddy boot prints in your living room on the carpet that weren't there the night before. Now, nothing's been taken out of your house, nothing's been disturbed, no one's been harmed, and yet every night, despite you locking the front doors and the windows and turning the alarm on, there are muddy boot prints that keep showing up on your carpet. Now, is that a threat? 
One other reason it's seen as a potential national security issue is that Lou Elizondo and Senator Reid say they've seen indications that both Russia and China are studying this as well. And if our adversaries figure out the technology before we do, it could be trouble. Tonight at 11, what about those UFO videos? Are they legit? Much more to come. Oh, it's always so fascinating. Yeah. yeah. Well, remember the UFO videos released by the Pentagon? It was late last year. Apparently, there are still more lurking in the military files. In fact, a man who spent 10 years working on the government's secret study of UFOs says there may have been many dramatic encounters with unknown technology that is far more advanced than anything in the U.S. military. Much of that secret UFO study was carried out right here in southern Nevada. The I-team's George Knapp recently sat down with the former intelligence officer who saw more of those files than anyone. It was in this position I learned that the phenomena is indeed real. Until he stepped out on stage last now, October alongside rock star Tom DeLonge and, DeLong and, and other former in government essence, insiders, most of the world had never heard of Luis Elizondo, forward. which is how he liked it. Elizondo's government career was spent in the shadows, in, uh, mostly as a Pentagon intelligence up. officer. I was at the top of my game in my career field, and I left it all to have this conversation with the American public. There the conversation is about UFOs. For almost 10 years, Again, Elizondo was a central a figure longer. in a secret Pentagon program to study unknown aerial threats. These days, he's preparing to relocate to the sleepy beach town of Encinitas, which is where Tom DeLonge's To The Stars Academy is based. That organization made public a pair of UFO videos which Elizondo helped to declassify before he left Washington. The videos were recorded by military pilots during encounters with far superior technology. In December, the New York Times reported on Elizondo and the videos, which set off a flurry of mainstream news coverage. Critics questioned whether Elizondo had released the videos on his own, as if he hid them in his lunch pail. The Department of Defense made the decision to release them through the Department of Defense adopts her process, approved the release for exactly the reason why the request was made. So it was completely on the up and up. One video recorded off San Diego in 2004 capped off a week of encounters between UFOs and the USS Nimitz battle group. Navy pilots got up close and personal with an object they described as a large tic tac, but which was capable of seemingly impossible movements and acceleration. Critics have come up with many theories about why the video and the chief witness are not legitimate. And yet when he tells you he's seen something, go from a near hover or something that is over the water going at 450 knots and all of a sudden takes off the horizon in two seconds. You better believe what he's telling you he's, he's seen. And by the way, that's backed up by three other individuals that were also on that same flight in, in two aircraft. And then later by the radar operators and then later by two more F-18s afterwards. It frustrates me because people say, well, that's just IR glare. That's IR fuzz. You know, or that's an atmospheric condition. A bug on the windshield. Right. I said, look, atmospheric conditions, you cannot lock a radar onto. So I'm sorry. It's not atmospheric. An initial cursory report about the Tic Tac encounter was tossed in a drawer at the Pentagon. So but the case was revived after Nevada Senator Harry Reid and colleagues initiated a formal program to study UFO incidents involving the military. The civilian contractor was Bigelow Aerospace in North Las Vegas. Investigators interviewed 18 witnesses to the Tic Tac case and declared it to be a legitimate unknown. The Tic Tac in that incident. That's not Russian. That's not Chinese. It's not ours, right? right. It's, for, it's somebody else's. It's from somewhere else. Um, I think even more compelling. Look, if this was a Tic Tac that we saw in 2004, that would have been extremely advanced technology and capabilities for 2004. I think everybody would agree. It's, it's extreme, it, it is considered extreme exotic technology today, let alone in 2004. But these observations match with previous observations going well before that. In other words, there have been other Nimitz-type incidents both before and since. There's a whole fleet of them. Look on the ASA. This is the second video oh released God. by the Pentagon. It shows an object dubbed the gimbal. It is not related to the Tic Tac case, Elizondo confirmed. Other independent sources told the I-team this video was recorded off the coast of Florida in 2015. There are many other dramatic encounters not yet made public. 
the Nimitz is, is simply an example of one case, one event in time of many that we looked at. When it continues to happen as a pattern, that is when we get to the point where we now become increasingly concerned. Because it's not an anomaly, now it's a trend. And if it's a trend, then we need to look at it. George Knapp, 8 News Now. It's